Hello beautiful people, my name is Bridget and welcome back to my channel. Hope you're all having an awesome day and today's video is really exciting. Today we're reviewing the Pricked Palette from Jeffree Star Cosmetics. It looks like a cute little purse, which is super cute. So today I'm going to give you my first impressions, thoughts on this. This is going to be the first video I do with this palette. I'll probably do another one as well with a different look on it. Today I just want to do like an everyday look and like get a good feel for how this palette is so far. So without any further ado you guys, let's go ahead and get started. Alright guys, as always with Jeffree Star Reviews, I have to give a disclaimer. If you don't like Jeffree Star Reviews or you don't like him as a person, it's weird that you clicked on this video. That's not my fault. This is my job. And if we disagree on using products or whatever, it's cool. We can just skip it and move on to the next video. I upload five times a week. Maybe another one fits you better. But anyways, I have to give a disclaimer because people always give me crap about it. And I know I get crap every time I upload one of these. But it's my job, you guys. Like, you know, this is what I do for a living and this is what brings in the view, so why would I not do it? So anyways, after that, I also want to give a quick shout out to my shop, theopencrypt.com. It is all handmade by me. We have a whole bunch of candles, wax melts, earrings, necklaces, accessories, bath salts, all kinds of stuff. If you want to check it out, I make it by hand and I really appreciate it. So next... <sighs> Now that we're past the disclaimers, I want to talk about the palette. So this retails for $52. It's a lot. Jeffree Star's palettes have gone up since his initial $45 palettes, Androgyny and Beauty Killer, which I guess it was Beauty Killer than Androgyny, but regardless, they have gone up in price, but you know, they're fancier and they're bigger. So I'm kind of over complaining about the price tag on these things. I ordered mine from Beautylish because it takes Jeffree Star's website a lot longer to ship things. This is like a faux leather deal and my little handle again like I said like a purse and this is what the back looks like. When you open up the little purse clasp inside it's actually beautiful on the inside. Now we've all seen pictures of it online I'm sure but in person it's a lot more red. Like it looks like a lot of bronzy neutrals and some oranges online. In person I would say there's a lot more redness to this than I kind of expected especially like these kind of tones are just a little warmer than I thought they would be online. Now, right off, <laughs> right off the bat here, I have to complain that there's not a yellow. Why is there not a yellow in here? I feel like this is everything. It would be like a beautiful palette if you gave me one yellow. Now, I'm not complaining because there's this green gold kind of moment going on, which is gorgeous and totally my vibe. But for me, if this was a yellow, which is kind of just like a cream beigey color, if this was like a poppin' bright yellow and you stuck it somewhere in the middle of the palette like maybe like right here or like right here I think it would make the palette pop so much more so I'll put a before and after adding in the yellow shade I'll, I'll photoshop something up for you because I think that would make the palette the palette just stand out a lot more so anyways I do want to test this out on my face so let's go ahead and do some swatches before we get started with that so this first row of three here, the first one's actually called Pale in Comparison, which is pretty cute. I didn't watch the full reveal video just because I feel like it's a lot, you know? Um, but here is the first shades. This whitish shade comes off as like a pe peachy, peaky kind of color, which is really cute. And this shade does come off pretty yellow, which is nice. So we're definitely going to use it in today's look. Um, but all three of those swatched out pretty good. A little on the chunkier side for the shimmers, but not bad. Especially since the last palette was missing a lot of shimmers. Also, I haven't noted yet, this is not an eyeshadow palette, technically. It is a pressed pigment palette, so some are eyeshadows, and some will be pigments that will stain your eyelids, but it's all part of keeping the formula vegan, so there's that. Here is the second shades, or the second row of shades. Again, a really, really pinky, peachy kind of color, just like this one. Um, so both of the shimmers so far, other than the orange one that was in the, second, the first row, very pinky peachy, which is kind of cute. Maybe these didn't make it into the Pink Religion palette because that came out not long ago at all and it had a lot of pinks in it but not many pink shimmers. So now we're seeing more pink shimmers in this pricked palette. I wonder if they were left over from the original, like Pink Religion moment. I don't know. So for the third row, there's the brightest orange in the palette, which I was kind of underwhelmed with how it swatched. Like it just swatched okay, um, but the rest of them look pretty good. I just feel like for it being the brightest orange, orange in this orange themed eyeshadow palette it should have punched in a little extra but swatches are not the test of an eyeshadow so i have some conflicting feelings on this fourth row right here so this is what this row looks like it's this one this one has the most lackluster swatch which is this one called double crossed it has a scorpion on it and also has the best shimmer so far which is unblunted it's a really it seems like a fragile formula of a shimmer but this swatched gorgeously it's this shade right here, that Scorpion Double Cross Deeper Brown shade that swatched out terribly. And I will say, even these two shades felt more dry and didn't swatch fantastically. So the fourth row, this one just, these three mattes felt 
more on the dry side, but that last shimmer is gorgeous. And also my fingers are being stained already, so um, if you have any plans the next day that involve not wearing makeup, I wouldn't wear this palette the day before. I'm just saying. <laughs> Alright, last row here. We have this beautiful green gold shimmer. It is magical. It is beautiful. It is stunning. This shade right here, kind of a berry tone, meh, in the palette. It doesn't look as berry toned. It just kind of looks like a deeper, kind of burgundy shade. Didn't really swatch all the best. Again, more on the dry side. And this last color is a black, which is the only matte in the palette that has glitter in it. So this matte with glitter swatched okay. I mean, honestly, I'm not too particularly scared of blacks not being the most black in the world because you can build up. And if a black is too pigmented, then it's going to ruin your eye look. So I'm going to go ahead and wash all this off and then we're going to start with the eye look. All right, so I've washed my hands and put on my eyelid primer, which is Gerard Cosmetics Clean Canvas Base in Fair. Just we have a good base to start off with. And after just a couple minutes of swatching, this is what my fingers look like. I did wash them thoroughly. It came off most of the back of my hand. There's just still a tiny tinge, but my fingers are just stained this way. So again, Jeffrey said, oh, these are going to be pigmented, um, but your eyelids will be too. <laughs> so, you know, take it as it is. I just want to give you all a fair warning. I don't really mind that much because I do wear makeup every day, but most people don't, I don't think. Do some people take days off from makeup? Because I feel like once in a while I do, but like I... I don't know. I, I don't know if everyone does, but let's get started with the eye look now. I'm going to hold the palette upside down so I don't blind you with the mirror, but we're going to get started with this little cutting edge shade. I'm going to put this right underneath my brow bone just so my eyelid primer doesn't crease, but we're going to leave all of this crease and lid open, just primer only. So right off the bat, I took a big fluffy brush with it. It's everywhere, like it's flying in the air. It really came off the pan. If you do not like kickback, I wouldn't suggest that shade for you. Um, personally, I don't care because I'm never going to use the entire like... I guess people just think it's like a waste of shadow. Because it's like kicked up in the air, you're not using it. Usually I'll go back into whatever's kicked up on the pan whenever I make my second dip in the palette. Um, and since I'm not going to use up a palette 100% anyways, I don't feel like I'm wasting any shadow. I'm just putting a little bit of that peach right up top here as you can tell it's not that pigmented if you're anything like skin tones deeper than me i don't really know if you notice it so moving on now i definitely want to go into this vitamin c word no actually let's go into sliver of sanity i'm gonna take a smaller like a smaller little blending brush into sliver of sanity which looked kind of like a yellow mustardy tone when we swatched it i want to take this and just tuck it in this inner half of the crease which is it's really pigmented like in the pan it looks real light it looks super dark on the eyes which i'm okay with because i want that yellow you know i want the yellow but it's not very accurate to what you see in the pan this one's definitely not as powdery as the last shade either so that's good all right cleaned off that big fluffy blending brush that i used for the first color down this is what the yellowy orange is looking like. Definitely not a yellow. Like it's swatched kind of yellowy. Definitely more of an orange or a gold on the eyes. I want to now move on to the outer portion. I'm going to leave this alone in here. I want to move on now to papaya latex. Let's do this one. Papaya latex right here. So I'm going to go into this one. A little kickback on the top of the pan. Not bad. Tapping off my excess. And I'm just going to start, since it's a really big brush, I'm just going to start buffering this in the outer half it does kind of seem stuck where I put it um, so if we can tell right off hand it's kind of stuck there so I'm just gonna add a little extra tap off the excess and just try to blur it out myself this is probably one of those pigment shades those are typically a little bit more tricky to blend but they have the pigmentation you want like right off the bat dipped in there this was bright orange now we have kind of a sunset moment going on, which is really cute. I want to kind of darken up this outer corner. So I want to start building on what we have now. So I want to go into this double cross shade. It's the one with the scorpion that we swatched and it just did not look well. No kickback on the pan, which is good. I'm going to tap off the excess. Nothing came off. And what I want to do is I just want to deepen up the outer corner with this shade. Now I could use a denser brush for this, but I'm really like, you know, going into this pan really hard. And just packing it with that. So I'm going to try to get this to do something for me. As you can tell, it has some pigmentation there. Um, it's just not what I would I would prefer, you know, because this looks really dark. And if I'm like stacking that up there, I would like it a little easier to work with. 
So this is the shadow I have going on right now. Not the most blended in the world yet, but we're working on it. I want to go into that tiny little, little dense blender now. And I want to go into Slice Me Open. It does look darker than this shade we just used. So I really want to like darken, darken up just a little bit of that outer V. So I'm going in here really heavy. No kick back on the pan or fall off the brush when I, brush when I tapped it. I just want to do this little outer V right here. Now, if you're having a hard time blending, you can hold it from the outer edge of the brush. I really want to like get this in there. So here is the difference with this shade added and without. You can definitely tell it helped. I don't think this shade was very good. Um, so I needed something else to help me, you know, lock it down. Lock the look I want down. Now with that big fluffy brush, I'm going to clean it off. I'm using one of these brush cleaners. I'm going to clean off all the excess product off of it. And I'm going to go back into that first original shade we used, which was like a little light peachy moment. So it's called Cutting Edge. I'm going to go into this one. Tap off our excess, since this one was the really powdery one. And I'm just going to blur the edges. Just blend those edges out a little bit. Kind of leave the inner portion alone, because I don't want this kind of orangey golden moment to disappear on us. Now this may not match, this may not look good, but I'm dying to use it. This Glimmer of Hope greeny gold shade. Like maybe it's gonna give me that yellow that I need for this look. I'm just gonna pack this on the lid. It just looks beautiful and smooth and look at it. It's amazing. This has that yellow that I need. It also looks green in the pan, but looks more yellow on the eyelid, I think. I needed that, y'all. I definitely still think it needs a yellow matte. Oh, well, this looks so pretty. For the lower lash line, now I'm going to take the E55 shader brush. It's one for my Sigma brush set. And I'm going to be using the shade Twisted Taste, which is this shade right here. Definitely more of like the purpley tones of this. Tap off our excess. I just want to get away from just using orange and yellows here. I don't want it to be like too sunsetty. So I'm going to bring the purple from my outer corner down. Just using a different shade. All right, so this is my finished eyeshadow. It's it's a little messy, but you know, I think it's okay. Honestly, I'm using natural daylight as my like video lights today. So it makes everything look harsh and you can see every single pore on my skin, you know, but you know, for being real life, this is what it is. And now I'm going to go pop on some mascara, lashes, lipstick, finish my face. I'll be right back and I'll show you the finished look. Hopefully it all comes together. <laughs> All right, so this is the finished look using the Jeffree Star Pricked Palette, which looks like a little purse. I think that's really cute, but I mean, I am like that it's flat. Like, some of them are not flat from Jeffree Star. They're not, like, flat shapes. I'm glad this one is. The roundedness makes it a little harder to store, if we're being honest, but it's still cute packaging. Here is my look up close. Um, it's just kind of like a sunsetty moment, which I think is very cute and, like, good for every day. I also added Deep Pockets from Jeffree Star. It's one of the newer liquid lipsticks as the lipstick for today because I wanted something darker. I wanted something a little vampy since I have a lot of gold and lightness on my eyes. Um, and I'm also wearing Marigold, the Raw Beauty Christie collab eyeliner in the waterline and Instaho lashes from Batty B. So that's cut up on my face. And now let's start talking about what I think of the palette so far. Again, I will be doing another video with it. You know, gotta get my money's worth since it is $52. But for the price tag, I think you're getting a luxurious looking palette. I do think the color scheme could be tweaked a little bit. I know some of the shades pull more towards a yellowier gold moment, but I definitely still think it needs that punch of bright yellow in there. I'm in love with the shimmer. I think it's beautiful. I am not in love with this double cross scorpion shade. I don't think it's very good. Everything else they used was pretty decent. Those are just the two shades that kind of stood out to me. Um, and overall, I think the look came out really good and really easy. I will update you guys. Um, I'll insert a clip afterwards if it stains my eyelids really bad, like after I move it today. Um, so yeah, we'll see. I don't know if that's happening yet or not, but you will. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel or leave me a nice comment down below. I'd appreciate it. And of course, you can check out my shop, theopencrypt.com. It's where my little bloody cleaver earrings are from. I hand make them and uh, yeah, I'm excited. I'm not excited about my excited. I'm not excited about my stained little fingers here, but you know, it could be worse. Thank you guys so much. Have an awesome and safe day there wherever you are. Bye.